Whenever dusk took the highway, my mother would charge me with outlook for the glow of eyes between the stands of pine and birch on our way up north. Geometric strips of woods planted as windbreaks for endless fields seemed so obviously ancient. So distinct was the city from the country and the country from wilderness. How expansive the local nature center to host so many flickering fireflies. Curious from whence and to where so many geese flew. Why were rabbits wild if they proliferated so in so many cities? And where time stood still, the moose stalked, far out there, deep off the gunflint. As life was watched more and more, such distinctions between place blurred. Cohabitation and migration through cities became more and more a wonder and wild. Accustomed to thinking life as the providence of individual organisms, individual animals and flora interacting at random atop an inanimate plane, alive is an individual, though it cannot sustain life. Groups of organisms of many species is what sustains life, but only in concert with their environment is the flow of energy and the cycling of chemical elements maintained that support life. Unsolved is how this rare, dense complexity exists, and as long as it has lasted. Centuries of scientific research has expanded humanity's perception of life. Intrinsic and natural is change at many scales of time and space in our biosphere, as Earth's temperature has reflected over the last million years. How at all time scales nature changes. Pollen deposits from Lake of the Clouds indicate that after the last glaciation, Superior Forest was a tundra covered by low shrubs, reindeer moss, and various lichens. A spruce forest replaced the tundra. 9,200 years ago, jack pines and red pines took over, characteristic of a warmer, drier climate. Paper birch and alders immigrated into the forest 8,300 years ago, and by 7,000 years ago, white pines sprouted over the canopy, followed by a return of jack pine and spruce, suggesting a cooling climate. Every thousand years, substantial change occurred in the forest resulting from climate change and arrival of species driven south during the last ice age. Aquatic habitats are the only chances in urban environments where wildlife can still be observed in its natural habitat, where, in the city, its wild things roam. As our animist view of the world was replaced by one of divinity, which eventually was replaced by mechanical perspective, and still new knowledge presents new vehicles of metaphor to convey.
two favorite foods of moose are water lilies and yew. Both are comprised mostly of cellulose and other complex carbohydrates, which these animals cannot digest. Anaerobic bacteria in their stomachs, all four, release enzymes that break down these complex compounds into simple sugars. What would be a good source of energy for the moose is the food source for these bacteria, which in turn ferment the sugars, giving off fatty acids as waste. These fatty acids are the moose's nutrients it absorbs through its rumen, along with any accompanying bacteria as the vegetation passes through its digestive system. Just as the atmosphere of moose stomachs is mediated by life, bacterial life specifically, so is Earth's. Around the age of the earliest fossils, there was a shift in the Earth's atmosphere to free nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Followed by an increase in oxygen and a decrease in carbon dioxide. The current atmosphere's free oxygen resulted from 3 billion years of photosynthesis. Earth's early atmosphere before the emergence of life primarily consisted of hydrogen, methane, and ammonia. Consequences of early photosynthesis further cascaded down the environment. Oxygen released into the vast continentless ocean combined with dissolved iron, changing it into a less soluble form. Around 2.2 to 1.8 billion years ago, iron sunk to the bottom of the ocean, forming thick bands of ore, where they are mined today from Minnesota to Australia. Not just confined to chemistry, life, organisms such as grasses, trees, and algae, affects Earth's temperature. Earth's rate at which it radiates heat is dependent upon its color. Perfect emitters are called black planets. Ice reflects 80 to 95% of light, grasslands 30 to 40%, and coniferous forests 10 to 15%. Change induces an emotional reckoning. Fear is the fruit of uncertainty. Frequency, kind, and degree of change is of greater concern than the happening of change at all. As clear cutting leads to loss of chemical elements necessary for life from soil, fires, paradoxically, unlock jack pine cones and make small clearings for non shade tolerant species, facilitating diversification of forests.
From the destruction of geological forces of continent formation and the fracturing and reassembly of supercontinents, new life springs and wells. Northern Pike evolved over 80 million years ago when Triceratops tromped across North America. Freshwater systems allow one to transverse eons and witness life and its forces before our time. Life still wild despite the new era along its periphery.